there were problems, there were deficiencies in our education. Although one of the things that um, I like to point out to people now is that actually everyone has deficiencies in their education. So mm -hmm. if your homeschool kid has deficiencies, like he's like join the club. Yeah, right. <laughs> going, going to school isn't gonna right. <laughs> fix that problem. Well, Misty, welcome. And I have to Thank tell you, you a funny story. So I, you know, like I said, I was, I was doing some research on you and I thought, okay, your website is called the Convivial Homeschool. That's a big word, convivial. <laughs> I don't even know that word. I was like, I don't even know what that word means. And, but it must be something super cool because she's named her website after it. So I actually had to look up what convivial means. And I was like, this is a great word. I need to just start incorporating this into my vocabulary. But convivial, for those of you who, like me, may not know this word, <laughs> it's an adjective, of course, and it means an, of an atmosphere or event. And here, listen to, listen to this description, to these synonyms, friendly, lively, enjoyable, cordial, hospitable, warm, good-natured, easy to get along with, approachable, accessible. And there's a whole bunch more. But those are the words that I just thought, you know what, as homeschool moms, this is really what we need to be. We need to be friendly and lively and enjoyable and warm and good natured and all of these things. And so we are going to talk about that this week with Misty. Um, so welcome to the podcast. Tell us about you and your family and what you're doing. Yes, thank you for having me on. So my husband and I were both homeschooled back in the day. Our parents homeschooled in the 80s and 90s. Um, my mom heard the spot with Raymond Moore on Focus on the Family when I was little. And so um, started homeschooling. I'm the oldest of seven. And so I was homeschooled from the very beginning. I love it. And graduated um, as a homeschool student all the way through. And my husband was started out as a homeschooler. And his mom did put him in school, in high school, for that high school math class. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> But then we both graduated as homeschool kids, and now we're, well, actually, now we have our own homeschool grads. Uh, we had, oh. have five kids that we've home educated all the way through. Um, two are graduated, and three are still at home. So wow. Now, are your graduates fun. out of your home and in college, or what are they doing now? One of them has moved out, and he is a, well, he's a real estate agent. So he wow. started his real life, That's awesome. his adult grown-up life. And then our second son is at college at New St. Andrews College, but he's still okay. living at home while he's doing okay. that. So. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, it's encouraging to hear that. You know, I think oftentimes as homeschool moms, we're like, are our kids going to make it through? Yes. Is it going to be okay? And, <laughs> and I'm sure you had those same doubts as well, even though you were homeschooled, um, of just feeling overwhelmed with this whole world of homeschooling. And it is overwhelming. I mean, good Golly, I'm in year 12, made a movie about it. I have, <laughs> you know, been doing a podcast for five years and I still feel overwhelmed with my responsibility to homeschool. Um, yeah. But I know for sure that it's the right thing to do and the Lord keeps showing himself faithful. So tell us about your homeschool journey with your kids. I mean, you were homeschooled and I've known a lot of kids who, people who were homeschooled, now adults, who were homeschooled back in the 80s and 90s. And they went into their adult life and they were like, yeah, nope, not going to do that with my kids. What, what made you decide to homeschool your kids as well? Well, so my husband and I got married really young. We were 19 when we got married and 21 when we had our oldest. So we were really in that uh, late teens, early 20s, oldest children. Mm -hmm. We saw all the problems that there were problems. There were deficiencies in our education. Although one of the things that um, I like to point out to people now is that actually everyone has deficiencies in their education. So mm. if your homeschool kid has deficiencies, like he's like join the club. Yeah, right. <laughs> going, going to school isn't gonna <laughs> right. fix that problem. So, um, so we were definitely kind of on that critical uh, attitude path. Mm -hmm. And we tried to start a classical Christian school when we were in our young twenties. Um, 
an and actual school that people would go to. Yes, a day school. Okay. Okay. And then that would so we would get it start. We were just pregnant. I was pregnant with the first. Okay. And there was a group of people that were trying to start a Christian day school. I was like, well, you know what? That's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna have a higher caliber of education for our kids. Uh-huh. We'll start this school and go that way. But that school had a kindergarten for one year and then stopped. <laughs> it didn't go oh, further. Wow. So I was like, well, you know, we're okay with homeschooling. It's just our plan B. So we'll go yeah. with plan B. It'll be fine. So I'm a researcher and I was, you know, still in this early 20s stage where I was going to be so much better than my mom. <laughs> I, you know, had my list. Actually, I made sure. a list when I was 12 years old. Oh, wow. Of, of all the things that I would never do when I was a mom that oh, my mom did. <laughs> did your mom I, know that you had this list? Uh, she found it. Oh, I gosh. actually did write it down and she found it. <laughs> oh, my. So, yeah, I've done pretty much everything on that list because, um, well, that's the way life goes. I tell my, sure. I have a teenage daughter now. So I just remind her, I'm like, just so you know, <laughs> whatever you're critical of, right. that's what you're going to have to struggle with and figure out for yourself. Not Yeah. <laughs> so the things you said you would never do are all the things that you're like, yep, this is what it means to be yep. a mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. That's, that's awesome. So, so we kind of, we started homeschooling kind of as a plan B and I did all the research. I read all the homeschool books that were at the library at the time and bought all kinds of books and, um, to got started, but a big advantage that we did have a second generation homeschoolers was an understanding of what a home atmosphere really is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so many people, um, didn't spend their entire day at home with their mom. And so their expectations are just unrealistic for what that's going to be like. Sure. I, I grew up, uh, all day, every day with my mom and younger siblings. Actually, there's about two years in my whole, until I was 35 that I didn't live with a three-year-old. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Cause you had your siblings so, and then you had your own sibling. children. Yep. Yep. Uh, so my youngest sister was six when wow. my first was born. So, okay. it, so I knew what a life with lots of kids in the house mm-hmm. was like. So I feel like I did go in with, um, an understanding that reading what, what kids read on their own mm-hmm. is um, one of the most important parts of the education, more important than what curriculum we picked, was yeah. that they have time to read, that they are reading, and that I find them plenty of books to keep them reading. Yeah. And, um, and I knew that my day was going to be mostly uh, coaching sibling squabbles. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and sitting on top of children, making them do their math page because I didn't have uh, decades of classroom experience. I only had four years of college. Mm-hmm. That was my only classroom experience. So um, just knowing that um, I was mothering while teaching was a big advantage to second generation homeschooling. I wanted it to be a home right. that we were doing an education in, I, yeah. not trying to make our home into a school. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 